Auditions. That word alone is enough to turn musicians' hair gray, myself included. In order to win or even play well at one of these things, you need a really solid preparation process. I'd like to share the five-step process that I used to win an audition this past week, and my hope is that you can take some elements of this and put it into your own process. And if you stick around to the end, I have a hack that can be used, if you are a little crazy, to streamline the process down and make it even more effective. I'll have chapters in the description, so feel free to skip around the video to any section you need, and this advice can work for any instrument. Step one, before you get the chance to sit down and start learning the notes, there's a long list of things that you need to get done first. You need to find your auditions and decide whether or not you actually want the job. Audition announcements can be found in the union newsletter, orchestra websites, and email lists. But before deciding to take the audition, be sure that you actually want the job. This seems really obvious, but you'd be surprised. Auditions cost orchestras a lot of time and money, and if the person that wins the audition turns the job down, it can completely screw the orchestra, and many times they have to redo the entire process. Don't do this, especially if you ever want to work with that organization again. Create a performance resume and send it in. If you don't already have one, you'll have to create a one-page performance resume to send in to the audition committee to review. This resume should be concise and only contain relevant information. Things to include are name, instrument, contact info, orchestral experience, professional first, academic second. And be sure to be clear about your roles in the orchestra. If you are a sub, mark that down. If you are a principal, mark that down. Don't exaggerate or lie. It only takes one person checking for you to get caught. Other things to include are primary teachers, education, and other high-level musical accomplishments. Don't include irrelevant information or very old work experience, and don't smash so much info on there that nobody can read it. If you are interested, I will have a resume template available on my Patreon with the exact template I use for my resumes. Once your resume is ready, send it in to the personnel manager well ahead of the deadline with an email expressing interest in the upcoming audition. Don't forget to put your instrument and audition title in the subject of the email. Something like this should be fine. Step two, musical organization. This is a long road you are about to start down, and to give yourself a fighting chance, you need to make sure that you are organized and efficient. These are the steps that most commonly get skipped, but they lay the foundation for everything that is to come. Get your music together. This is one that seems very obvious, but again, you might be surprised. Print off the list of excerpts exactly as it is given to you, and get it all in order in one place, bound together in one book. Don't go into an audition with six different excerpt books and papers flying all over the place. Decide your tempos now. To find your tempos, take five reputable recordings of your excerpt spot, add those five together, and divide by five to find the average tempo. Now based on your tempo you have settled on, decide your bowings, fingerings, stickings, or whatever else you need for your instrument. Don't just make these up as you go along. It's important to build up muscle memory, so keeping these things consistent is very important right from the beginning. Step three, learning the notes. Okay, with all of that out of the way, the actual work begins. Time to actually learn the notes. But it's not good enough just to learn them. Remember all that stress I was talking about earlier? We need to learn these notes so well that we can still execute them at a high level when we are under a tremendous amount of pressure. Ideally, you should be able to play them without thinking about it because on audition day your mind is going to be going a million miles a minute but how do we do that well there's three main ways that I have found that can help us get to this level of proficiency the first is slow practice gradually accelerated over a long period of time practice slow is the number one piece of advice given from every teacher to every student ever but the often missing component is the plan for acceleration you have to have a plan to eventually get those excerpts up to tempo so what we need to do is create a spreadsheet that stretches a predetermined length of time I would say that this should be the length of time you have to prepare for your audition minus two weeks. On the first day, you'll put in 50% of the excerpt's tempo, and on the last day, you'll put in 100% of the excerpt's tempo. And on the days in between, you gradually and steadily increase the tempo across the time span you have available. Aim for at least three repetitions of that excerpt at that day's given tempo before moving on to the next. And of course, use a metronome and a tuner to guide your practice. I'll have a template for a 21-day acceleration on Patreon as well if you are interested. The second is near or at tempo practice in very small chunks. With with this method, we start with the piece at or near the final tempo instead of ramping the tempo up. But instead of focusing on the entire excerpt at once, we focus on very small chunks and learn them one at a time. A chunk can be defined as a phrase, a measure, a beat, a slurred group, or even a single note. So we take chunk one at tempo and practice it until it can be repeated several times in a row perfectly. We then take the chunk right next door and add it to the first chunk, and then practice these two together as a group until it can be repeated several times perfectly. Then we move on to chunk three and drop chunk one. This process continues until you get to the end of the excerpt. The third is supplemental exercises, etudes, and drills that assist you in learning the notes. These are exercises that are not the music on the page, but help you learn the music more effectively. 
examples of this can include practicing a tricky bow stroke that appears in an excerpt on other music, such as scales or arpeggios, using added rhythm variations to straight runs to increase the flexibility and control over the notes, taking a tricky shape in a passage and practicing it across various keys and scales, and many more I'm sure you can think of. Excerpt specific strategies. So those are the big three ones that I have found to help me. But out of these three and whatever else you have been given, how do you decide what strategy to use for any given excerpt? Well, it depends on the challenges of the excerpt and what specifically the committee is looking for from those pieces. Before beginning your work on any excerpt, start by asking yourself, why does the committee want to hear this? What is the point? The opening of Mahler 2 is heard very often in bass auditions, but why? Technically, it's not very difficult, and it's not really all that fast either, but it is packed full of tiny little details and has a lot of rhythmic variation, particularly between the 16th notes and the triplets. So the point of this excerpt is to test your rhythm and to test your attention to detail. For those reasons, I think it would be much more appropriate to go with the chunk strategy. Accelerating the tempo for weeks on an excerpt whose final tempo is not very fast is wasted time in my opinion, and it will probably be quite boring, leading you to miss many of the important details that are on the page. Instead, I would work in very small chunks, making sure that I'm catching every detail on the page, and I would constantly have my metronome beating either sixteenths or triplets to keep my rhythm honest. But how about another example? Mozart 35, the one that makes bass players piss their pants. This one is incredibly difficult to execute from a technical perspective. It's very fast and very light. Doesn't look all that hard on paper, but the bass players in the audience will know. Because of the technical difficulty of this one, it would be best to combine all three strategies. We'll start with slow tempo ramp ups of the technical sections, combined with rhythm practice, and once we get close to the tempo, we can begin to focus on it in very small, difficult chunks. So depending on what the excerpt is and what it is asking for will determine your strategy with it. Step four, recording yourself. When we play our instruments, it sounds different to us than it does to anybody else. Nobody else is sitting directly behind your cello, and in an audition, you are going to be playing from a far distance in a big room that will sound a lot different than when you are right next to the instrument. So recording yourself is a must. You have to hear your playing through somebody else's perspective. Try and set up your mic far away if you can. Also, recording allows us to focus on one thing at a time. When you are playing, you should be focusing on the execution of the music on your instrument and not worrying about mistakes. And when you are listening back, you should hyper-focus on mistakes when you don't have to worry about executing. Doing both at once is just not efficient. Recording yourself will allow you to find mistakes that you may not have noticed while you were playing. When you find a problem, point it out and try a solution then record it again. If it doesn't work, find another solution. If it does, you're all set to go on to the next problem. Repeat this process until you don't find any more problems. Step five, mock auditions. Mock auditions and practice performances is where you test your preparation and you start to deal with nerves. So far, everything we have done is very low risk. You can screw up a thousand times in your room by yourself and you won't even feel a little bit nervous. Dealing with nerves is its own skill that needs to be dealt with on its own. And this is the time to do it. When you play mocks, the quality of your playing will go down at first. But after a few you, you will get used to being nervous and your quality of playing will be much more consistent with your preparation. It's not really that you get over nerves, it's more like you learn how to better deal with them and they don't bother you as much. Your goal should be to do a few mock auditions so you can work yourself through this process and when you are doing them try to make them as realistic as possible. No talking, no extra noise, and have a jury take notes. Take the feedback from your jury and work on those spots that went wrong and do it again. After you've done a few mocks and you feel comfortable, you're ready to take your audition. So that is a ton of work and it will be a grueling process over the course of weeks or months, but all that hard work will pay off on audition day. By going through this process, you give yourself a fighting chance of playing well and maybe even winning your audition. But there is one other thing that you can try that will speed up this process and get you even better results, but it's not for the faint of heart. I mentioned in the beginning you might have to be a little bit crazy for this. The first two steps don't change. Your organization and preliminary work stay the same. But then starting on step three, start recording your practice sessions each day and post it online. Even better if you can live stream. By doing this, you are essentially completing steps three, four, and five all at the same time. You will feel nervous from the very beginning, and you'll have to work through it. You'll be more diligent about your practice because you know other people are watching, and you'll have all these recordings saved so you can go back and listen to whatever went wrong. This is essentially what I did leading up to this past audition that I won. I had planned to live stream the entire process. I got through two days, and then it got copyright claimed. But I still recorded all of it and posted it to Patreon, and it really seemed to help with my prep process. It's scary to do that, but that's the point. So that that's it. What do you think? What could you take away from this and what would you do differently? Let me know in the comments. If you want to get those templates and watch all 17 days of my last prep process, they are both available on my Patreon. Thanks for watching.